Let's make the Ecto comp worthy. What's going on everyone? Today, I've got in front of me here a brand new Element Ecto and the TGH Titan chassis conversion for the Element platform. Now, this is an upgraded chassis set that includes a number of things like a new skid plate, a front servo mount, a new panhard mount, some hardware, some linkages, and I also have their universal metal bumper set up. So, what I'm going to do is open up this brand new Ecto and we're gonna work on doing the conversion. Now, this setup is made for ones that use a standard triangulated four link setup where the Ecto does use trailing arms in the rear. So we are going to modify this from a trailing arm setup to a standard linked set. So that is one difference that if you decided to use the Ecto, you would also need to figure out. Those links are not included in this kit and I'm gonna have to dig through my box of extras to find exactly what I need. The Ecto is a 12.8 inch wheelbase versus the standard 12.3 that we see in a lot of vehicles. Element does have some 12.3 inch vehicles like the Sendero HD. But I think the Element body, which has grown on me over time, is a little bit more suited to the comp life. So that's the one I decided to have. And it's one of the few that I haven't owned before. So we're gonna open this up and start digging in. Now I've covered a number of details about the elements in the past, but we'll do a quick overview just of some basic things in case you're not fully aware. Uh, 4.75 inch tall tires on this, the General Grabbers, which is the same ones that come on the uh, Sendero HD. And this one has a nice narrow front bumper on it, little faux winch there, a Power Wagon-esque body, but it is one piece, but it does have a nice uh, molded rack in the back. Body clips hold it on front and rear. With the body removed, you can see the fairly minimal underpinnings of the Element. The Stealth X transmission is one of the things from Element that was a little bit different compared to others. It's kind of the form factor of the three gear transmission that we all knew. Stealth X incorporates overdrive though, which is great for this type of build since we're planning to do comp style. We have very narrow slider bases on here. Those are used to hold the actual trailing arms here at the backside. That's the same as the gatekeeper, which I covered pretty in depth in uh, the initial release. This does use the same narrow battery tray as the gatekeeper used as well. And then up front, we've got the ESC mounted as well as a standard steering servo. That's pretty much it, but we've got the nice associated shocks, which are always a bonus. The axles are pretty much unchanged for the element line. Here is what we received from TGH. Some carbon fiber chassis rails, pretty standard deal. Design obviously is uh, tailored specifically to the element. Again, this is an element specific chassis called the Titan. Then we've got this little heat sealed strip of extras. This little piece down here at the bottom is the DSM or dual servo mount. If you've heard that terminology used in the past and didn't know what it meant. Next, we've got a skid plate, which is a Vader skid plate, actually uh, produced by a different company and then packaged in this for, uh, or from TGH. We've got an aluminum panhard mount here. Next, we've got a package of uh, K&K hardware uh, with the TGH logo on there for the chassis specifically. Next, we've got a single aluminum cross brace. And then up here, we've got a, uh, I assume or guess that it's a titanium link, but that is all. Um, for this conversion, I believe that is what you get. And that is all of you get. There is no instructions included with this. So we're just gonna dive in and see how that goes. But uh, also, we also have two 70 millimeter hardcore RC chassis cross braces, 70 millimeters. This one is labeled a G-Speed cross brace. Um, they appear to all be the exact same length. They almost appear to be the same cross brace exactly. Um, maybe they are, not sure why I've got two that are hardcore and one that is uh, G-Speed, but is what it is. And then this is the TGH Universal Bumper. This is a pretty cool little piece. It's got some little metal uh, aluminum pieces that go on the side of your chassis. And then you've got a cross 
uh, bumper basically that goes between them. So you can have it as any width for any chassis and makes it nice and easy to give yourself a alum or a, I believe again, that this is titanium. So that's what we have in front of us here. Now I'm going to dive in, start disassembling this truck so that I can begin. But before that, Thanks to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this portion of today's video. The Ridge Wallet is a super compact wallet, just a totally different style. I've been carrying a Ridge Wallet for a number of years and holds up to a dozen cards. It's got a money clip option in the back, or they also come with an elastic cash strap option that just makes things even a little bit thinner. You can get these in a ton of different styles. This is the forged ember, which is my favorite, but I've also got forged carbon fiber in a more standard style. We got burnt titanium, some anodized aluminum ones. You have over a hundred different styles to choose from. If you're interested in picking one of these up, they make a great Father's Day gift. You can use the code HARLEY10 to save yourself 15% off in the link in the description below. Again, thanks to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this portion of today's episode. Beyond the parts that were received in the kit, I'm gonna try to use as much from the truck as possible. It's probably gonna be easiest to disassemble basically the entire truck. So we stripped that thing down with haste uh, and we'll need some things off of here, the servo, the ESC, the receiver, and maybe something else, but you know, maybe we'll relocate the battery tray. We'll see exactly how that all goes together. Uh, don't know yet. So now's the part where we're going to start assembling the TGH chassis. We'll start with the new skid plate. The skid plate is going to be the widest portion of the chassis. And then this chassis will actually taper back down. Even though the rails are straight, once you start bolting things in, it will add a little bit of bend and curve, which is normal. Uh, don't freak out when you have to do that. It actually adds some rigidity to the chassis as well by adding that bend into it. So let's get the uh, skid plate installed. We'll put all of the new hardware from TGH Vanquish pit mat. We'll keep it separate and determine if we had to use extra or not. So what they may be doing actually is including these set screws that have to go in first through the uh, skid plate to hold the links in and then a separate screw to attach it because there isn't any hardware included that is long enough to do the job of both. Uh, both attaching it and holding the links on. And the element skid plate only used set screws to hold just the links on that's attached elsewhere. So I believe that that's what we are intended to do. If you were new and didn't know what was going on, I could see this being very frustrating. Let me tell you, a power driver is your friend if you're installing one of these though. Now also because of the style of skid plate with the lower links having to be attached uh, before we're able to put it into the skid plate, we also need to figure out the replacement links for the rear lowers. So I'm gonna have to dive right into that. I was hoping to be able to kind of push that off till towards the end, but no time like the present. Now, rather than building this chassis with this whole axle in the way, I'm gonna just take off the links. Now the skid plate is symmetric. So front and rear is only determined by the orientation, which you want the uh, transmission to go in. Now. I'm going to basically keep this in the stock orientation. Transmission was mounted uh, with the bolt pattern to the passenger side. Put our front links in with that orientation in mind. Now, since you're using the uh, set screws, there isn't really a stopping point. You just have to stop when you feel like it's threaded in enough. Front lower links are installed. Now I'm going to dig through my box, try and find some rear lowers. So I decided to actually kind of shortcut that. Rather than finding the links that I need, I just installed a couple of new rod ends into that skid plate and then I'll determine my link length and thread them in later. But since they're not easily accessible, I figured that uh, this is just the easiest way to get myself a direction that I can keep moving forward on. But now that we've got that portion done, I did install the rails onto the skid plate with a couple like M3 by 10s roughly eights or tens. Uh, but now I'm going to install the dual servo mount, which is this aluminum piece here. Now this is not symmetric. There's a little bit extra meat on one side 
versus the other. And there's two holes towards one side versus the other. Now, I believe that this is likely going to be the front because we're probably going to use those two holes for the pan hard mount. Now, like I mentioned, we are going to have some taper to the chassis. So when you initially just put this servo mount in there, it's gonna be that, you know, hot dog down a hallway feeling. Uh, but we're gonna suck the chassis in by starting the screws on each side using, again, the shorter type screws, M3 by eights, I believe. Now, the carbon fiber will comply pretty easily. You can just, you can really just tighten it down. It's not that difficult. This is not a big deal. Um, don't over stress or over worry about this type of, or this portion of it, just tighten it. Carbon fiber has got some bend to it. Don't freak out about little things like that. And those two holes in the front of the servo mount are lining up with this slot here on the side. The rails are also symmetric. So one rail, same for each side. Uh, doesn't, there's no left or right. Now we've got the pan hard mount. So the pan hard mount has got three holes, which will be on the bottom. And then the two side holes, those are the two that are going to go into that dual servo mount. gets us our pan hard mount attached. Only have one screw on the passenger side. Throw another one in that. I don't think we need to put both. I'm just gonna put the one towards the front. Now in the rear, there is no, you know, big cross brace like this. I believe that is where we're going to be installing that G-speed cross brace. No position is noted. We're just gonna choose a couple of random screw lengths. Again, staying towards the shorter ones, not sure what size is intended. We have a lot of holes to choose from back here for our cross brace location. Doesn't, I don't really have a rhyme or reason to what I'm choosing. It's just the forward hole out of this group of three. Again, this is going to taper the chassis a little bit. It'll kind of even itself out, even if it doesn't start that way. We're gonna grab our front axle Flip the chassis over and get this put into place. See how things start lining up. Now I do see that we've got one, two, three, four, five spacers that are a little bit wider and then three that are thinner. Don't know what the purpose of that is for sure, but I am kind of looking at these shocks and I'm thinking that we're supposed to use one of these wider ones on the shocks. That does make things look a little bit better. I'm still using the stock hardware to reattach them at this point. That link that was provided, I don't believe is the pan hard because it is shorter than the stock one. So we're gonna stay with the longer factory one at first and see how things line up. Shocks are a little bit over to one side at full droop and then they're to the other side at full compression. So looks like that's uh, that could be correct. I definitely noticed that we're not, we don't have enough angle on our steering link to get up there. So we're gonna have to move that link to the top or possibly change it. Maybe that's what the shorter link is for. But the front suspension is on at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the transmission in now. New screws for the transmission are not included, but the stock ones are also too short. There's only a couple of threads showing. Well, for two of the four screws that are included. So we'll put two in for now and reinstall the drive shaft. That gives us the front and the transmission installed. Now we've got to figure out our rear link geometry. All right, to figure out how to get my wheelbase set up, I installed the factory upper links, which are also shorter because they kind of match the length of the stock trailing arms, uh, which are also very short. So I installed those in place because there is a hole that's basically in the same position as the factory uh, hole on the element chassis. So once I got that done, I could get the 
axle put in place and then I just found a set of lower links that was going to put me at about the proper pinion angle. And I got that sorted out rather quickly. I've got a fairly organized link collection. I've got them in like a few different bins based on sizes. Um, and I've got a lot of links in those ranges. So luckily that worked out for me. Now, if you don't have links laying around, you're gonna have to find something. But the lower links that I used, uh, if you're trying to find something, the eye to eye distance, of these is right at about 140 millimeters length long that's uh, from eye to eye and now i'm going to replace those uppers so i want the uppers to be relatively close in length to the lower links uh, you want that just so that it keeps your pinion angle movement a little bit more in check i'm going to do the same thing with kind of experimenting finding links that appear to be about the proper length okay so now that we've got the axle in place, our pinion angle looks decent. Now we can install the rear shocks back in place. We are going to use the new spacers for the top of the shock again. My shock position selections at this point don't really have any rhyme or reason. They're just kind of a neutral selection to get me something to move forward with. We've already got this thing back on its own legs. I want to transfer this rear body uh, or this rear cross brace over because I think that these body post locations could match up and allow us to uh, shortcut some body mounting. It does match very close, if not the same. So that's good news. And the bolt pattern also lines up. Rear cross brace is in that helps Get the chassis nice and rigid. Now, up front. Since we have the TGH bumper set, I think that we'll go ahead and use that instead of transferring over the uh, plastic element one. While this one does look like it would work just fine, I think that uh, having the uh, that style bumper will be a little bit cooler. Let's throw the body back on for a second. All right, no problem. Let's uh, let's get this bumper mounted up. This is already a really rigid front setup with that servo mount being so close. So I'm only going to use uh, hardware and lock nuts. We're gonna keep them loose so we can slide them front to back because it's a slotted design. Uh, I do not have enough hardware to get these mounted up with the right length. I mean, I've got plenty of hardware, but it's just not the right length. We'll pull the front bumper mounting hardware out of the chassis. Ah, we can only push the bumper so far back before it hits the pan hard. Install these tiny M2.5 millimeter screws, it looks like. You will need an 050 driver to get those in there. Front bumper is on and still sticks out there ways. Not too bad, but I mean, it's probably a little bit better than stock, but it's still out there. If I wanted to be picky, I would cut these bumper brackets and slide it back about a quarter of an inch. That would take the front of this bar right to the front of the carbon fiber chassis. Let's, uh, let's take a look at battery tray and electronics positioning before we wrap this up. Factory battery tray out. I've got the factory cross number still on there. I just want to see how close it lines up with the bolt holes that they have put into this chassis. I don't know if we're even close or not. The skid plate geometry is much different. It changes the height of the transmission and that causes interference with the uh, drive shaft. So I've got the upper or the forward most screws in place. Um, and then I retightened the uh, the chassis screws up here to get everything to kind of go back into place. And it's still doing okay. Now, the only problem is that now this battery tray is kind of floating. If you were just putting this together and you didn't have anything else, you didn't have a 3D printer, you don't know how to draw anything up, uh, it would do. At least it gives us an idea. Now we know where it needs to sit if we want to run the battery in this location. Since there is no sliders, um, this is as good a spot as any for now. They have a, a tray that fits into their dual servo mount in the front, and that holds the ESC. I'm gonna see if that will line up with the 
TGH one, uses a standard servo pattern to bolt in, so it in fact will work. And we need to put the steering servo in. Now the last thing we have to do is get that steering linkage. First, I'm gonna try using the factory one and I'm just going to flip it to the top side and see if that does it. Uh, I don't have the receiver installed. I think I'm gonna, gonna put it in this battery tray. If I'm running, you know, my comp trucks, I usually run really small batteries and this battery, I mean, they would just be swimming in that battery tray. So I'm gonna divide it up and I'll just run it on one side and I'll run the uh, a comp size pack on the other. Reroute and reinstall our wiring and we're gonna call this thing wrapped up. So the conversion is done, other than the fact that I do not have a front body mount on there yet. There's no provisions for that or anything like it in the kit. Uh, they just kind of expect you to figure that out. And I think that's kind of the big thing about this and a lot of like flat rail chassis builds. Now, while this is easier than just buying what appears to be the favorite chassis of the month or you know which one you like the looks of the best this one is a little bit easier because things do bolt up to it and there's more parts included that do work together but you still have to figure out how the fact that i did use an ecto allowed me to use that rear body mounting setup which was a direct bolt-in that was nice but some sort of instruction documentation should be included now the big question should be what did we gain like what's the point right like why are you buying this why did you spend the money um and there's a you know a couple of ways to go about you know trying to rationalize that to yourself and then hopefully in performance now this should have a tucked up skid plate now really that just means that it either raises the belly or it lowers the bottom of the chassis that doesn't really change that much the whole flat belly thing is eh, it can be debated as far as like what it's actually doing there now you do end up with a chassis that is more rigid it's not totally rigid you can still get some twist in this but the element chassis are pretty twisty for being a c channel chassis setup they're twistier than you would imagine but you do end up with a lighter carbon fiber chassis. So less weight up high, which is the goal. You want to keep your truck nice and light and then only add weight at the absolute lowest points that you can. And I think that this does a fairly good job of that. Now I made the existing battery tray work. Granted, it's not perfect. It's sitting in there with just a couple of screws rather than all four. I did mount my receiver in there since we don't have any sliders. I think that we could transfer over the slider bases from our previous kit, but with what they have on there for like the trailing arm mounts and things like that, I don't find it necessary. I think that it's probably better to leave them off and then to either find some type of sliders that are a little bit more minimal and bolt those on if you choose, or just leave them with nothing on there and get maximum clearance couple of different ways to go about that. We could have transferred over the stock bumper, but instead we installed the TGH metal universal mount, which is a nice looking piece, gives you a metal bumper. If you're into scale competitions, that's some extra points. The longer wheelbase here versus kind of standard 12.3, can definitely have its benefits in performance. And going with a four link like this will make this still very predictable, won't have you know excessive twist or anything along those lines. And these shock towers do offer more adjustment than the element versions, either front or rear. While there is five holes of adjustment on these, they're all very close together. So there's really very little point in the amount of adjustment that you get with these. This chassis has a much wider range, both in the front and the rear. The front more so than the rear, although in the front, you do have to work around the clearances of the pan hard and such. Now I was left over with a couple of spacers that I could have used to adjust pan hard angle. There's three hole locations for the pan hard itself that can be used. Also that titanium link was included and I did not find the location where that was required. Um, so I don't know exactly what it was for or why it's here, uh, but I didn't need it. So it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. But this would make a great base for a class two or even a class three Sorka build if that was your end goal. And uh, gives you just a, a solid place to start. My plan for the truck at this point is to design up something that will give me a nice solid front body mounting without having to put more holes in this ecto body if possible. If not, 
we'll put a couple of extra holes in it and put some stickers over the uh, previous ones to call it a day. Not the end of the world, but just something I wanna try and do. And if I'm able to come up with something that I think is good enough, I'll put the STL up there in case you have a 3D printer at home or know someone with a 3D printer that can help you out. If I really end up enjoying this truck, you may likely see future videos on it. You know, some new wheels and tires, foams, we could do new motor, ESC, servo, we could put a servo winch in there. We could take this thing a long ways to make it a you know proper class two comp truck because we're already on our way. We've already got some scale points going on with metal bumpers and the rear roll bar, and it just looks pretty good. So let me know what you guys think. Would you pick up one of these for your element, whether it's an Ecto or a Sendero, a Trail Walker, a Night Runner, or any of the other ones that are also options? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks again for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoy these. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.